Greetings. Happy afternoon. Um, today is today is Friday. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we are on Friday and we are in a Venus day. Thank you so much for um you know, for being here, for participating and checking out my videos and stuff like that. Um, I'm late today. Well, I don't want to say I'm late today, but I will say this. That Leo moon came in yesterday and Leo is also a fire sign and we're starting a new moon cycle. Um, so how the moon cycles kind of roll, just to talk about it a little bit, right? Um, whenever we have generally, generally, it changes sometimes, but the moon, we will have a new moon in one sign and then a full moon in the opposite sign. And usually these energies are both, both, they will be the both, they will both be the same energy. Like they'll be both cardinal or both mutable or both fixed or both, um, yeah, cardinal, mutable, fixed. Um, and they will be in opposition to one another. And so a new moon cycle is starting when the last quarter moon hits and the last quarter moon is begins the cycle according to what energies are going to be present in the new and full moon. So for this new and full moon, we're going to have a new moon in Scorpio, fixed water. We're going to have a full moon in Taurus, fixed earth. And so the last quarter moon is in fixed fire. So that's how we know we're starting a new moon cycle, depending when, when it gets to, when these, um, when it, gosh, when the last quarter, the new moon, the first quarter and the full moon are all in the same energies. And so this month is going to be fixed energy. So yesterday when the Leo moon came in, I could feel like just an overwhelm of energy because we just had the um, full moon in, in Aries and that's fire. And so we can, this all this new energy is coming in. You can feel the new energy and the propensity is to, to move into whatever your old behaviors, but the opportunity is to catch yourself to really be present to what's going on inside of you. What am I feeling right now? Why do I need this? What's going on with me? Like I'm noticing right now that I am eating, like I've been eating a box of cookies. I swear to God, I have, I am somebody who is very um, particular about food and I don't overeat. And I, I sometimes I do, if I'm socializing, I will sort of engage in food quite a bit. But food is not really my thing. But because there's so much energy coming in and I am attempting to ground myself, I'm, I'm watching myself reach for food to comfort my energy. So just feel these new energies and rather than take actions on them or, you know, tr repeat patterns, it's important to direct the energy in a new way. And that requires presence, that requires ritual, that requires being aware of your body, that requires deep um, deep contemplation. It requires taking responsibility. This is not the work for people who are not really ready to do the work. So if you're doing the work, this is a good time to really look at your new energy because with this new energy coming in, and if you're conscious and aware of it, we're going to be directed through our relationship to our higher self to make new choices. Many people are leaving jobs. If you're paying attention to the, you know, reading some of the media, I don't do much, but I do know that, you know, like they're like 4 million people left their jobs last month. Like this is a revolution. This is, it's revolutionary to have these things going on. This is a change in culture, a change in how we relate to reality. A ch this is a change from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. And it's like, we're starting to see the physical experience of it. First was COVID. Um, now where people are leaving their jobs, we're going to watch people have massive awakenings. We're going to watch the culture begin to have massive shifts and awakenings because we are moving ages. And so today is a Venus day. So today is a Venus day. Venus is the day that I ask for 
um, reciprocity, however that works for you, right? If you want to donate to my cash app, that's dollar sign Monique Ruffin. If you want to donate to my Venmo, that's at sign Monique hyphen Ruffin. Venus is the sign of reciprocity, of restoring, of relationship, of relating. And the reason that I ask for, um, for us to do a day to, you know, where reciprocity is just because it's about our value. And, and when I ask for, you know, it's, it's really important that we know our value. It's really important that we honor our value. And it's really important that we honor not only our value, but the value we get from others, because that creates reciprocity and it creates karma. Everything is an opportunity to build karma in, um, in one direction or not, right? So if you honor something that you um, that you benefit from, whether it just be thank you or just however, it's just an exchange of energy, right? Just by exchanging energy, if you honor it, then it benefits you. You plant good seeds in your own life and those seeds will sprout. When you don't, it's, you know, it's kind of like, ah, uh, not honoring energy, right? Just look at what white people have done in this country with black people, how they just take, 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 but then they don't honor the systems, the white systems don't honor where the benefit from. So they never really own it. They, they, they're they just hungry for it, but they can't fully embody it because they don't honor the truth of it. Does this make sense, right? I'm just, that's just an example. I'm just giving you an example of how it works. It's like, you know, if you take from nature and you don't give, then nature can't continue to replenish. It's just, it's just creating cycles of reciprocity. So you got to know your value and you have to honor value. You honor your value and the value of others. And the reason I ask for reciprocity is because I know my value. There was a time when I didn't know my value and because I know my value and it doesn't even matter who gives here or what you give because the universe is going to honor me knowing my value. So I'm going to get what's for me anyway, because in consciousness, I know that the universe, I is working through me and that there is, um, that there's reciprocity between me and the universe. So with that, that is Venus. So Venus is at the 23rd degree of Sagittarius and we are, um, Venus and Sagittarius, all this energy is coming in. And so, you know, with all this energy with Venus and Sagittarius and the sun and Scorpio, like new love, new romance, new energy is coming. The question is, are you conscious of it? Are you going to be a slave to it or are you going to use it in the way that you desire for it to be used? It's, it's, it's good to be intentional and to understand because this energy is so hot that we can often just jump into old patterns and old ways of being like Venus at the 23rd degree is randomness. So it's a lot of feelings, a lot of emotion, a lot of passion, right? All that's really good stuff. And it requires a level of consciousness so that you can be direct with it so that you don't create more obsessions or judgments like really do your best to feel the energy feel it right it's like i know when i feel like i told you guys i'm eating cookies oh my gosh because because it's intense <laughs> i'm eating cookies and you know um sugar and things like that and and the cookies let me just say this I'm eating almond flour cookies. So I'm doing myself, um, I'm doing it better than I would do it in the past, right? I'm, I'm being healthy and conscious about it, but I'm also aware that the energy is so intense for me that it feels good to like soothe it with old behavior, with something that feels familiar. So it's almost like a way to ground myself so that I don't like shoot out of the atmosphere too quickly so that I really can take my time to move, to like harness the energy in a way that feels in alignment with me and for me. Okay, so with the sun in Scorpio, we are 
feeling a lot of new energy, right? The energy shows up as desire. It shows up as passion. It can show up as obsessions if we've not done a lot of work to heal our old patterns. It can show up as, you know, um, moving back, moving into allowing your sexual desire to own you rather than you owning it. Um, being like creating patterns in relationships that are that don't really serve you. But if you're doing the work to heal and transform, you become more aware of these energies and patterns. You become more, you create space between you and the behavior. And if you can create space between you and you and the behavior, then you have the capacity to begin to feel the energy, feel the desire. You got to be with it. It really is like sitting in fire. It's not it's not comfortable, okay, is what I want to say. It's like sitting in fire. But if you can feel it because we're in this new cycle and do some prayer work around it, do some meditation, some dancing, some movement, and ask, what is it that I really want here? What is my truest, deepest desire? If I could have anything I wanted, what would it be? And pay attention to what comes up for you. Is it ego-based? Like, do you want more things? No judgment of anything. It doesn't matter at all. Do you want more things? You know, do you are you attached to a particular person or an experience with a particular person? Like, just look at where your energy is taking you to. And, you know, one of the things when I first started doing this kind of work, I started really realizing how a lot of my desires were rooted in fantasy and wanting something that I really couldn't have. A lot of my desires were rooted in addiction and like an addiction to suffering and not being able to have what I wanted and not being able to to really get anchored in what my true desires were, right? Like I need I needed to really be able to identify my conditioning, what was controlling me, my family patterning, my addictions, things like that. And once I started realizing that, I started being able to make a choice like, yeah, I know I really want to talk to this man, but rather than answer the phone when he calls, I'm going to continue to focus on building my business and what it is I know that I can guarantee for myself. I I use this kind of energy to really divide myself from patterns of love addiction and wanting to be saved by a man and rescued by a man to patterns of to creating patterns of really trusting myself and studying and learning self-knowledge and learning how to heal myself and understanding my family patterns so that I could actually get free. Self-knowledge is a really great desire to have in life because it is through self-knowledge and self-healing that we actually discover what we really, really want, who we really, really are, and how we can really access real happiness in this time on on the planet. Like I said, today is a Venus day. Venus at the 23rd degree of Sagittarius. When Venus leaves Sagittarius, Venus is going to Capricorn. So by Uh, The next week, at the end of next week, Venus will be entering Capricorn and Venus in Capricorn is going to do a Venus retrograde with Pluto at the beginning with Pluto. So we are really looking at letting go of our old relationship patterns. If this Mercury retrograde hasn't taught you one thing, I hope that it has taught you to, um, to, Rechannel your energies of, you know, love and desire and people pleasing and codependence to really loving yourself, really putting yourself first, because that's what all of this year is really about. This year is going to be a really intense year, but I'm talking to people every day who are really breaking free from old patterns and who are having awakenings and who are really cutting them their their egos away from the system of conditions and conditionings that we were bought into through you know capitalism and you know western idolatry and all that old bullshit that we you know have with you know how to make money and what romance is all these ways of being that we've been indoctrinated to that really aren't true so as we 
begin to identify those things in us that no longer work, that no longer serve us. As we follow the cycles of the moon and the astrology, we begin to get our power back. We begin to get our energy back so that we can do with it what we actually are here to do so that we can really be in service to our higher selves and stop being in service to our lower nature. And our lower nature is fixed on material possessions, you know, sex and money. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but that can only sustain you for so long. You really want to get to the place in your own consciousness where you realize that those things serve you in your evolution, but those things are not your evolution and your happiness. So this Venus day is really an opportunity for you to feel your emotions and feelings. Look at the stories you're telling yourself about what you're feeling, right? I know for me, I am really um, noticing that I am complete with giving my power to external ideas of love and needing acceptance from another and, you know, um, glorifying the external over the internal. Like I'm really coming into a place of deep trust within myself and the vision that I have for my life and what I'm called to. Like I'm, I'm letting go, like I feel like I'm in the last final vestiges of looking for approval externally and coming home into a realization that I am the full creator of this reality, that everything in my life is birthed through my own subconscious, through my own psyche. When I tell you guys, the light of the sun comes in and we project our psyches out into this energetic field and the people that are in our lives are energetic matches to what we are projecting in our psyche. And the more we can reprogram ourselves, heal ourselves of past trauma, and really understand our relationship to this reality, we can begin to project what we desire. We can begin to project through our pineal gland, heaven on earth, heaven bliss, joy, happiness. I mean, that's really possible. <laughs> it's really, really possible. And it's hard to believe that that's possible in the world as it is, as turned upside down as it is, but it's really possible. And it's more possible now because of the contrast that we have in the world. Because everything is so chaotic, we have a great opportunity to move into more heavenly, heavenly states. Does that make sense? So don't look at the world. <laughs> it's falling apart. Look inside your own heart and your own consciousness because that is where you will build heaven and project it into the reality that you are in control of. Nobody else has the control over your reality, over what you think, over what you feel. Everything in your life is your soul's creation so that you created it to help you evolve. Every pain you're going through right now is the pain that your soul created for you to help you evolve, to help those obstacles that you are experiencing right now are there to help you break free. However great your obstacles are, is the equal amount of your power. Your power is greater than your obstacles. Your power is greater than what the world is showing you that you can't do. Everything is possible. So the more that you are willing to, and let me say this, I'm gonna always say this, especially melanated beings, especially melanated beings. Why? because we have the codes of creation in our subconscious. Ain't nobody gonna tell you that, but we are the code bearers to build a new reality. Why? Because of our relationship to the sun. So it is so important, so important for especially melanated black women 
to begin to wake up. And I'm talking to y'all every day. I'm having conversations with one or more of you who are beginning to waken up, to, to come out of the sleep state and realize that you'll never find satisfaction by taking on the ideas and the ways of being of this Western world. You're realizing that. It's so beautiful to watch. Oh my God, y'all know who y'all are. I am in awe. I am in awe. I'm, I feel so privileged that I have the opportunity to be with all people who are having awakenings. But what I'm seeing is my clients who come to me who are black women are right, are like, yeah, yeah, like just popping. And it is, it is the most amazing, magical thing ever. Because the more of us that wake up, because we are the holders of the mother of creation, we will illuminate others and everyone will begin to awaken in our energetic frequencies. That's the thing that is important to know. So it's important for all of us to begin to be true to ourselves, to honor what's, what we're really feeling, to you know really, um, really be, like I said, authentic. One of the things that I experienced not so long ago, I was in this space and I don't want to say too much because I don't, maybe the person is listening, but I could, I was in this space with this white woman and I could just feel her, her hiding. Like she was very much someone who had a lot of surgery, a lot of, you know, doing a lot to her body that was unnatural. And I could feel in her energy field, I could feel like a succubus kind of vampire energy. I could feel it. And I just was aware of it and I just couldn't ignore it. I was just like, this doesn't feel right to me and I'm not going to I'm not going to act like it's okay. Like I'm not going to just be nice and and so when they would come to want to spend time with me and invite themselves I would say no. I would just be like no. No thank you. No thank you. And I could feel that they were really just trying to maybe it was unconscious, maybe it was conscious. I don't really know. They were really just trying to feed from my energy field and I just wouldn't allow them to do it. And so um, lately, as I've been aware of them, I'm not, I'm not connected to them because I, I resisted that pull. I'm noticed, I'm hearing stories that their life is just falling apart, like literally. And it gives me so much hmm, pleasure to know that what I was sensing was true and accurate. I didn't have words for it to have even said it may have been perceived as cruel so i didn't say it i just said no thank you and now as i did not participate in what my conditioning is which is to just give to white people to serve them energetically because that's how i've been that's how most black people have been conditioned in this country we just we just are um we're just prone, whether we know it or not, through some sort of energetic exchange to give into whiteness what it is requesting of us. And so we might feel like, I don't like it or I don't want it, but we do it because it's how we've been groomed to be, right? So as I've been watching it, I literally am just cutting the cords, cutting the cords, cutting the cords. And like I said, recently I would talk to someone and this woman's life is completely just sort of coming undone in odd ways because I could feel that her energetic system was um, was running low, was running out, that was running out of energy and that she was needing to feed and I just wouldn't allow it, you know, and, and other black people would do it anyway because like I said, we don't know, but the more of us that are going to start to wake up, the more of us that are going to unplug from the systems, the more of us that are going to um, begin to function w by putting our own needs first. You know, the more women who put their own needs first, the more of us who honor our own truth and really begin to restore ourselves before we restore others. Like they say on the airplane, put your own oxygen mask on first. As this culture is collapsing, it needs the energy of black people. And that's why you see in all the media now, like all the billboards in Los Angeles, black people, you know, you go to the banks, black people are on all the advertisement because our energy is, is, um, is, 
fueling. It gives power. <laughs> Our energy gives power to it. So the more that we begin to power ourselves first, you know, and, and as all this new energy is coming in, the tendency is to move in the ways that you've always moved. But the opportunity is to take stock of your energy before you give it away. Ask, what are you feeling? What do you want? Why are you doing this? Who is this person? What's the value of this relationship? Really, really examine everything you do so that when you take action, it is an action that is reciprocity because it's all coming back anyway. So you want to make sure that what you're giving out is something that you actually want to come back. And so if you keep giving into old behaviors and old ways of being, yes, stop feeding the, the beast. Absolutely. If you keep giving into old ways of being, oh, you, that energy is, that energy is dying. And so you're going to be getting death back. Don't give your energy into death. Don't give your energy into old systems that are unsustainable. And now is the time as we are having these next full moons all year long. These full moons are going to be at the 27th, between like the 27th and 23rd degree from now until we have our next full moon in Aries. And the 20, these degrees are in aspects with the galactic center, which is in Sagittarius at the 26th degree. The galactic center is like the womb of the universe. So we're getting all this new energy in, right? But that degree, that number degree is peace, right? And peace means to be able to be present with all things and be peaceful. <laughs> like peace is not, peace is not passive. Peace is active. Peace is active, right? So it's able to be in the fire and not scream. To be in the whatever and not freeze. Like peace is no fucking joke. So we're going to have all this new energy coming in and you need to get ahead of it so that you can choose ye this day whom you shall serve. And if you're not ahead of it, you're going to serve your old master, <laughs> If you're not ahead of it, you'll serve your old master. If you want to serve a new master, pay attention to how you feel. Ask yourself questions and heal your trauma. So if there's anything I can do, I love y'all so much. Oh my God, I love y'all so much. We are transforming at deep levels. Oh, we are living through something revolutionary. I'm telling y'all. I'm talking to black women every day who are in deep awakenings. I'm talking to white people who are in deep awakenings too. Let me be really clear. They are. It's happening. Um, and it's fun and it's scary and it's intense. Um, and Jesus is out of style. <laughs> um, yes, practicing magic, meditation, and pulling back in my energy every day so I can continually unlink from the system and get back to the power I could feel so clearly as a child. Yes! Yes! Wow, this is so great, Moo Mama. Thank you, Miss Black Awareness. Um, oh, I'm so grateful for you too. I really am. Okay, so I want y'all to know I'm going camping in a couple of weeks. Let me tell y'all, I've been trying to get camping. Whew, I've been trying to get to sleep on the earth for a little while. And um, I'm going camping next week. And I'm so excited because oh, it just makes me feel so happy. I have a group of friends, a new group of friends. And we have an incredible intention together. And, um, and it is healing. And we're going to be offering healing ceremonies, medicine ceremonies, moon ceremonies to support specifically black people, but we're not going to say no to people who are committed to healing because that's what my mission is, right? So, but really it's important to create spaces where black people are in leadership because our energy, our energy is the medicine. And, um, and so I'm going camping. I'm so excited. Okay, you all, peace and blessings. Thank you, everybody, for donations. For those of you who want to give donations, thank you so much. I love you. I appreciate you. Again, my cash app is dollar sign Monique Ruffin. My Venmo is at sign Monique hyphen Ruffin. My email, PayPal, PayPal is Monique C. Ruffin at gmail.com. 
All right, y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Okay. Bye, everybody.